Hey, um, listen, can I say thank you for coming out? Um, again, I've been spending today uh, on the North Shore over recent days. I've spent time in uh, Mangere, but also in Browns Bay, uh, West Auckland. Uh, today, Dan and I were actually out uh, meeting with DePaul House, who do amazing work on homelessness and transition housing. Uh, of course, they're under huge pressure at this point in time, uh, but they're also doing an incredible job actually dealing with what they're dealing with just in the normal course of accommodating people, while they've also been dealing with some flooding uh, of their own. So it's been uh, good to spend some time with them uh, out, in, out in Northcote today as well. So I think the big news of the day, frankly, is that uh, what an absolutely shambolic piece of communication we've had around whether schools are open or closed uh, at this point in time. Uh, last night we had parents and principals being informed essentially through the media that schools were being suspended for seven days. Uh, again, now today we're hearing that it's possibly a chance that they could be back on again and reopen over the course of the week. And I just think, you know, from my perspective, uh, essentially, you know, Auckland's a big city uh, and it's got 1.7 million people in it. There are some parts of our city that have been deeply impacted by the floods and that's completely understandable. It makes sense where schools don't open in those areas. But there are other parts of the city, like East Auckland and others, where actually uh, it's quite possible to be able to open those schools and be able to carry on there. Uh, I think when you think about our children here in Auckland in particular, after long extended periods of lockdown, 2023 has to be the year that we actually get them caught up uh, academically and get them back into a routine of attending school regularly. And so from, from my view, I think again, a one-size-fits-all approach isn't the right way to go. Uh, and importantly, again, what we've seen is a government racing to lockdown, essentially uh, being really unclear with a very shambolic set of communications that I think have been made it incredibly difficult for parents across Auckland to be able to plan uh, and for businesses and others to be able to manage all of that as well. So, uh, yeah, I think that's the frustration, again, that I've picked up even just in, in today uh, from parents who are incredibly frustrated. They cannot plan when there's just been another piece of shambolic communication are coming from the government. With that, happy to take questions. Well, look, I think you know it's not a one-size-fits-all, uh, and I think you know, as I said, out in East Auckland, an area of 130,000 people, as big as Dunedin, uh, it's been largely unaffected. There are other parts of you know South Auckland, particularly Papakura, around that, that you know the areas where there's actually been um, actually people you know those suburbs haven't been too impacted at all, and so actually being able to get our kids back into school uh, is important, uh, and that should be a priority at this point in time, and that would be be very necessary. Uh, other parts of Auckland, I fully understand the bits that I've visited over the last few days. I fully understand how stressful that is. Many of the schools have been used as community hubs uh, and that's fully understandable. But I think the communication has been really poor. When principals and when parents find out late last night that school's been cancelled for another week, uh, how are they supposed to plan? And then the, the communication today is the possibility that it could be opening at some point again this week. Is it on? Is it off? What's happening? That's impossible for parents to plan uh, as they think about meeting their work commitments and their pre responsibilities uh, as a result. Would you say you're not very confident in the current management of the um, Look, as I've said before, and I called it at the time, to say, look, you know, this, the state of emergency should have been called much, much sooner. Um, you know, there was a vacuum of leadership and also communication in, in that early period. Uh, you know, certainly the Mayor has come out and declared that as well. Uh, as I've said right from the beginning, there will be a time for us to do a comprehensive review about how the government, central government agencies interface with the local government agencies and what worked well and what didn't work well. My only thing is that um, having lived in America for a long time and seen how you know, cities across America respond to extreme weather events, whether they be hurricanes or snowstorms, uh, you know, there's a need for us to step up our game again. We've had outstanding responses from people across the communities. You know, that often it's been local board-led, it's been church-led, uh, it's been led by principals who have stepped into the void and really got their communities activated and done a superb job with it. But we actually need to make sure that we strengthen the processes for emergency management as well. And so, you know, we should know when something's happening, where are the 20 places that you go to in Auckland that are going to be the evacuation hubs and the community hubs. And on site should be the stretchers and the bedding and, and some basic cooking materials that we need uh, in order to be able to get those uh, those 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 centres up, up, up and running. Uh, that's what happens in, in other countries around the world as they face extreme weather events as well. Do you think 
Uh, not my judgment, uh, and as I said, there'll be a time for us after a comprehensive review to understand what could have been improved. Um, I think by the Mayor's own admission, he said he could have done a better job in his communication in that first 24, 48 hours. And so, again, I'd sooner let a dispassionate, objective, high-quality review take place, uh, but let's make sure we really confront it, uh, and then let's really get the actions in place so that we can get better emergency management for our country going forward. Um, well, they trust me because they know that we're going to deliver a national party government that will get things done. You know, New Zealanders at the moment are very frustrated that after five and a half years, uh, all our outcomes have gone backwards. The economy's gone backwards, our education system's failing and, and, and slipping, we've got major uh, healthcare systems falling apart, we've got rapidly rising levels of crime, and we've got a housing crisis that hasn't been solved. And after five and a half years, they know this is a government that just doesn't know how to get things done. My background's different. I come from outside of politics. I come from a different, uh, you know, into this world over the last two years into political life. I've come because I want to get things done, and I've assembled a team that knows how to do that, um, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Well, Simon and I were in Sunny Nook yesterday afternoon, and we were in houses removing carpet, and and um, you know the, the devastation was complete. Uh, you know, it was incredibly tragically you know tough stories. Uh, also, of people that have been doing it tough with a cost of living crisis anyway, and then to have a flood event thrown on top of it, uh, and you know it's just incredibly devastating. And so you know it was um, a real privilege, but a tremendous, and but but also just incredible sadness to see you know, the tragedy that these people are going through, but also really inspiring to see the communities coming together that were operating, say, Simon out of the Sunny Nook com you know, Community Centre yesterday was really impressive. Um, and in terms of today, um, obviously there's still talk that the rain is still to come, um, but um, from what we've seen just moving around, you know, it's been a continuation of uh, you know, what we saw, people still cleaning up and actually dealing with what they're dealing with on, from the weekend, rather than any new rain uh, events happening at this point in time. Look, I think what the government needs to do is get a comprehensive economic plan to deal with inflation. Uh, what we've been calling for over the last 15 months is, you know, you might remember I was saying, look, the economic dashboard has got some amber lights on it, and the government needs to start to do some things to be able to navigate that. The, the issue is the underlying causes of our inflation and the government not managing that well. You know, what you saw on the latest inflation data was half of it, yes, comes from overseas, things like the Ukraine war, the price of oil, supply chain difficulties, I understand that. But the other half is domestically driven, things well within the New Zealand government's, the Labor government's control, and it has failed to deal with those issues. Costs that get passed on to businesses that lead to higher prices. We need to make sure that we free up our immigration settings so that we can get productive growth back into our economy, control and have disciplined government spending, give people some tax relief through inflation-adjusted tax brackets, and get the Reserve Bank single-mindedly focused on fighting inflation and putting it back below 3% again. You know, that's the plan that we've been talking about now for over a year, but the government hasn't made any adjustments to be able to deal with the underlying causes of inflation, which it should do. Well, our policy on climate change is that we are 100% committed to meeting net carbon zero by 2050. We're 100% committed to delivering on our NDC targets for 2030. We supported the government in the, in the emissions budgets last year. So be under no illusions. Uh, I personally and our National Party are under no illusions that we're going to see more extreme weather events brought on by climate change whether it was the floods down in Ashburton, which were probably 15% worse, according to NIWA, by virtue of climate change. This is real. It's happening. Uh, we need to be now move on and actually get climate mitigation in place. Again, we can have a government that talks a big bumper sticker game and talks a big headline game about what they're going to do about the climate emergency, but actually hasn't followed through and actually put plans in place to deliver better outcomes. 
You know, so that's the challenge that we actually have here. You know, we have, there's been not a lot of progress made on actually climate mitigation and what infrastructure needs are needed in key parts of New Zealand, in certain towns and in certain low-lying areas that we're going to need to make investments in. That's obvious to all of us that we need to do that, but we now need to start making progress on those issues really quickly. Oh, look, I just know how incredibly tough it has been. I mean, I've been out and about. I've met with people in their homes. I've met with people cleaning out their small businesses. Um, I've seen the community come around. I mean, we have seen the very, very best of New Zealand in the sense of community people getting around each other, neighbours, uh, friends, uh, family, uh, you know, strangers uh, showing up with food offerings and offering to muck in and sweep out and, and hose out, um, you know, um, you know, water from everywhere. So it's been, so it's been really, really, you know, really encouraging and inspiring to see New Zealanders at our very best. You know, no doubt about it. There is a lot for us to learn from this experience, though. If we are going to be more professional and more responsive to future climate-driven uh, extreme weather events like we're seeing, we need to really have a comprehensive review and learn from this experience and make sure we build it in. As I said, I've seen other countries who don't have all that great community spirit that we have in New Zealand. If we didn't have those great teachers stepping up, if we hadn't had those local board members stepping up, if we hadn't had the churches stepping up, businesses coming forward and offering to help and, and, and make big investments and donations has been so important. But we do need to improve our processes to make sure that we can be better prepared uh, for these events in the future. Awesome. Sure. Oh, look, to, you know, not to be un, not, not unexpected from our point of view, as I said yesterday. I mean, when you um, get appointed into the office of the Prime Minister, uh, we've seen other examples, Jenny Shipley, Bill English, getting a 25 to 30 point jump, uh, completely you know, not unexpected for us. For us, fundamentally, new leader for the Labour Party, same team, doesn't know how to get things done. Uh, we are very focused on how do we reduce the cost of living for people, how do we raise incomes for all, how do we restore law and order in this country, and also how do we deliver better health and education. That's what New Zealanders want us focused on, that's what National is going to talk about over the coming nine months. We're going to deliver a government that can get things done, which is desperately what Kiwis need right now. Thank you. Appreciate it.